Kings and let's worship the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the I am that I am. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Thank you for this day you have made. For us to rejoice and be glad. Thank you for overwhelming miracles. Signs and wonders we see all the time in our midst. Thank you for what you did at the worship and wonders night. Thank you for Emmanuel. Thank you for all the testimonies we saw that day. Be glorified, be honored, and be adored. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody say loud, amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Welcome three people around you and welcome you to the presence of the Lord. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. And peace be seated. Powerful, powerful lineup. Without any doubt, God has blessed us as a people, blessed us with incredible, inspiring, life changing songs. And we say to Him alone, be all the praise in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Thanksgiving and Testimony service of the month of June, which is actually the very, very last day of the sixth month the last day of the second quarter the last day the last day of the second quarter and the last day of the first half give the Lord the praise like we have said this year shall not just rush like that we have already seen many many miracles but as we step into the seventh month we shall see far more somebody say aloud amen so we are going to be looking at the value of thanksgiving. The value of thanksgiving. It's going to be strictly thanksgiving. We're going to be seeing the values thereof. Our objective is to understand the values and also the virtues of thanksgiving. Jeremiah chapter 30 and in verse 19, he said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them. They shall not be small. Our objective again is to understand both the values, is to understand the values and the virtues of thanksgiving. In our world and in life today, thanksgiving is a scarce virtue. As far as human experience and human vocabulary are concerned in our world today. Last week we saw how that we are in the end times and the major sign and symptom of the end time is that people will be ungrateful according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. Say so this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous. They shall be boasters. They shall be proud. Blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 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 unthankful. So the, the end time is characterized by unthankfulness. People will be unthankful to people and they will be unthankful to God. But this must be overcome as we look at the values and the virtue, and the virtue of thanksgiving. Now, no, what are the values? What, what, what virtue? What do we expect and experience from thanksgiving? Number one, thanksgiving guarantees the stability and sustainability of current blessings. The stability and sustainability of current blessings. Malachi chapter 2 and in verse 2 he said if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name say the Lord of hosts I will even send a curse upon you God forbid and I will curse your blessings yea I have cursed them already because you did not lay it to heart. 
That is to give me thanks. If you won't thank me, if you won't appreciate me for what I have done, what you claim to have does not have a future. The stability of your current situation and the sustainability are guaranteed by appreciation. No miracle is guaranteed a future for the ungrateful. The breakthrough of the ungrateful is not guaranteed. What the man is proud of today will not be there tomorrow if he doesn't know how to thank. Because you laid it not to heart to give thanks to my name. It is not the devil that will destroy the blessing. It's me, myself. This is very important. The stability. If you are in health today and you don't know that that health is a privilege, if you have supplies today and you don't know it's a privilege. If you have favor today and you don't know it is the mercy of God. And you are arrogant about it. The future of it cannot be guaranteed. That is why proud people don't have a future. Lucifer became Satan. Nebuchadnezzar became an animal. If you laid it not to heart. To give thanks to my name. Thanksgiving. Guarantees the stability, the sustainability of current blessings. The future of the blessing is not guaranteed. If the blesser is not giving recognition and appreciation, again, the future of the blessing is not guaranteed. If the blesser is not giving recognition and appreciation, you recognize the blesser, you appreciate the blesser. That was number one. And this, I think, is very important. Thank God for your health. It establishes the health. Thank God for your resources. It establishes your resources. Thank God for your finances. It establishes your finances. Thank God for your favor. It stabilizes that favor. Number two. Thanksgiving guarantees the possibility of future blessings. That is, you are blessed today. Not only are you stabilizing the blessing of today, you are establishing the possibility of future ones. In Psalm 50 verse 23, the Bible said, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. Glorifying God is also the same as thanking him. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, you use your mouth well. To give me thanks, I will show you my intervention. I will show you the salvation of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 34 to 37. We saw how David was appreciating God for delivering him from the lion and the bear. The God who delivered me from the lion and the bear, he would deliver me also from this uncircumcised Philistine. I'd like you to, to, to note this. What you do about your current blessings determines what God will do about your future blessing. Whatever you do regarding your current blessing is the determinant of what God will do about your future blessing. If you give God thanks concerning the current blessing, then God will ensure that future blessings are released. If I am to say it this way, that future blessings are not in view until current blessings are appreciated. Future blessings are not in view until current blessings are appreciated. You will never be able to bring down Goliath until you have appreciated God for deliverance from the lion. 
until you have appreciated God for deliverance from the beer. There are so many people who are wondering why. They are not seeing any new things in their lives. Because they are not thanking God for anything in their lives. I knew a man many years ago. He was very far ahead in the ministry of healings, miracles, signs, and wonders, very far, clearly. When a crusade, and after every miracle, testimony, I will dance and dance and sing and do everything. At that time, he said, oh, we are wasting too much time. Time is being wasted. Too much time is being wasted to the miracle. Let's just rush on. And I didn't know how to do it otherwise. Headache is healed. We will stop and dance for it. Uh, knee pain is healed. This is how we know how to do it. And God shifted the things. And began to shift things. Cancers are healed. All manner of things. You may. You may. Thank. Too low. You may thank too little, but you can never thank too much. It is possible that you didn't thank enough, but it is impossible that you are thanking too much. It is possible that you didn't praise enough, but it is impossible that you are praising too much. One spiritual therapy that does not have overdose is praise. No side effects. No overdose symptoms. Hallelujah. Somebody say it loud, amen. If a person cannot thank God for the finger of God, you won't see his hand. If you cannot thank God for the one bedroom apartment you, have, you, you are in, you won't see the duplex. And even if you see it, you can't keep it. There are many people who have not seen what they are looking for because they are despising where they are. Somebody say loud, amen. We have passed through phases of our lives. When we stepped into ministry, we have stayed in one room, boys' quarter. At our 25th anniversary, we went to that room to look at it. Nabuja here. Our first child was in that room. We were about five or six in that one room. No one. Myself, my wife, our daughter, the relation of mine, the relation of my wife's, that's five now, plus one young man who was like an, um, a, a worker in the church. Six of us in one room. I was not aware. I didn't know we were in one room. I wasn't aware. If you saw me outside, Nothing has reduced. The forcefulness, the sharpness, the excitement, the everything, nothing. When, when it was time to pray, I would come out of the room in, into the bus. We had a, school, a church bus then. And I would stay inside and blast. When I'm through, I return back. That's after leaving two, three bedroom houses. In, I had a, in the doctor's quarter, I had a house. In the doctor's quarter, she, was, she had a house. We had two houses that we left to come into this one, to one room. You understand what I'm saying? That was a sacrifice of the beginning. Some don't know that. We're in that one room for 13 months. Then moved to a rented house for 13 years. While the, rent, the house renting was on, church buildings were being built. Buildings, churches were being built, but we forgot that we didn't have a house. But there was, you can't trace nothing. No, sir. No downcastness, nothing. Both of myself and my... In fact, we are not aware. For us, that was it. We are living that life at its best. <laughs> what we had, what we didn't have, we didn't notice. Do you understand? There's no way that house is a testimony to... Nothing is a testimony now, by God's grace. Nothing can be... Okay, this is too strange. Because God is doing everything. Every strange thing. Hallelujah. 
So please don't despise the days of small beginnings. Don't despise where you are. Don't despise what you have. It is the seed for what God will do. What you do with your current blessings will determine what God will do with the future. Somebody say amen. I see some of us here very, very surprised at what I was saying. You are not aware. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thanksgiving guarantees the possibility of future blessings. Thirdly, which is where I will round off of this first service, is that Thanksgiving guarantees the multiplicity of available resources. What is available becomes multipliable by Thanksgiving. It, 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 it guarantees the multiplicability, the multiplicity, the multiplication of available resources. In Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 11, Jesus Christ spoke, John 6 rather, John 6, 11 and 12. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down, likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. He carried the five loaves, two fishes, and gave thanks. We already read Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. He said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. And I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. What you have at hand multiplies with appreciation. What you have at hand. It may not have been enough before you started thanking but it multiplies with appreciation. Appreciation is fertilization for multiplication. In the, it's a law of the spirit. Appreciation is fertilization for multiplication. Everything dries up around the murmurer. Everything dries up around the grumbler. Everything dries up. Somebody say, aloud, amen. But I see things multiplying around your life. I see things multiply around your life. I see things multiply around your life. Can somebody who is saying amen shout the Lord and say amen? amen? Very, 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 very important. When the children of Israel said, what is this? As they saw the manna, they were sentenced to it for 40 years. There are many people who kill their salary the moment it entered their hands. <laughs> kill their salary just the salary just enter and say what is this what can this do not knowing that there are people who have no salary Lord thank you for these five loaves and two fishes I'm appreciative at least this is something and you begin practice your covenant practices tithing and so forth and then mysteriously the things are just, it's just there appreciation very very Profuse appreciation. Somebody say amen. My children were talking among themselves yesterday. And I busted into them. And they said, one among them, they were just talking. Said, they will give us the same pocket money. But at the end of the month, the, the money is still there in this one's hand. <laughs> said, plenty, plenty. I mean, said, how? They were trying to unravel various mysteries why why that is so and i can tell you one of the mysteries that can make your resources to thrive in your hands the same that everybody has one of the one of the one of the mysteries is the mystery of appreciation when men see their cousin in our finance department here in the sorting out of service of um, givings it is in the climate of appreciation it was a spiritual principle taught to them we are not depending on what is coming inside offering basket we are depending on the supplies of god so appreciate god when this construction was on this expenditure per month was far in excess of offering the offering couldn't it's impossible for offering to account 
I don't know if the offering of one year, maybe the accountant can tell me whether the offering of one year was able to handle what was being spent a month. Yet, where this what was coming was coming was mysterious. You couldn't even trace, okay, this is the man responsible, this is the person that is behind the supplies. Because we taught ourselves, our God shall not supply all our needs according to money in offering basket or supply the need of the, I mean, the, the, the need of all our needs, and I'm talking about the church, but according to his riches in glory. And he didn't say, oh, my God shall supply all your needs according to your salary from the, from the, from, from the office, but according to his riches in glory. So it, by the time we begin to appreciate this God, you begin to see supplies from quarters you can't explain. What others pay for can be given to you free of charge. That's how our own life and ministry has been. What others pay for. And there are testimonies that you share that will cause some people to be angry. Pay heavily for. We traveled all the way to America the other time and uh, returned back and the accounts office here said, so what is going to be the bill of the, of the, of, of the traveling to, to this Canada? What is the bill of it? I said, there's no need for any bill. That was handled already. That is, church is free from paying anything. Handled neatly, tidily. In the way where you arrive straight, you flew 12, 11 and a half hours and arrived straight and went straight to the meeting to preach. Somebody say amen. That is, needs being met sup from supplies from diverse resources, from diverse quarters, without stress. That shall be your portion. I prophesy to somebody here today, your season of shortage is over forever. Your season of scarcity is over forever. Your season of begging is over forever. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. I have more to say, but I'll continue in the second service. Please pick the second service message or listen to it online. Uh, uh, we, we have the Thanksgiving, the impact of the Thanksgiving on divine presence. We'll look at that in the next service and what that does to the life of a person and the resources. We also have, see how Thanksgiving is a fertilizer of greatness. I've seen it, I witnessed it firsthand. We're also going to be seeing how Thanksgiving is a defense against adversity. A defense against adversity. Your life of thanks. We're going to see that also in the second service. But very, very quickly, how and when do we thank God? Number one, that is how and when. First of all, Psalm 34 verse 1 said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. So, number one, we bless God and thank him at all times. That is, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm appreciative. He's, you are faithful. Blessed be your name. Blessed be. That is, in the middle of traffic, in the middle of a hectic work day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. David said it's continually in his mouth. And if we practice scriptural principles, we will experience scriptural products. Scriptural results. Continually. Number two, bless God. Morning and night. When you wake up in the morning, find something to thank God for. And before you retire at night, find something to thank God for, no matter how it is. Psalm 92 and in verse 1 to 2. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praise unto thy name, O Messiah, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. That is, in the morning, find something to thank God for. And then in the... Uh, thank God for the gift of life, for example. And then at night, by the time you are retiring in the night, of all your experiences through the day, look for something to appreciate God for. Number three, thank God in the midst of everything. In everything, give thanks. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. In everything. In the midst of everything. What is the meaning of that? Somebody had an accident. They broke the windscreen. 
broke the the headlamps, bashed the side by the roadside on coming towards Lube. And he came out of that car as if he wants to die. Hey, my car! But why? Now, I'm sure that there is nobody who has never had a car incident in one way or the other. At least, whether you are wrong or not. Because you, you don't have to be wrong. Somebody just ran into you. I have never stood on any road for two minutes because car jam. On my way straight. Thank you, Jesus. See you. God bless you. Straight. Not today. Oh. Because they broke the car headlamp. Would you have been would you have been happier if it was your eye that broke? The tire punctured. Would you be happier if it was your leg that broke? You came out of the car whole. You are still quarreling. Some people had accident. They took their dead body from there. Some people had accident straight from there on concert to the hospital. They are there for the next two months. You, you came out with your two legs. You are still quarreling. But what? Three hours on the road. Let's wait for police. Let's wait. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a way to live your life. Papa Yede was say one day his driver came home. Shivering and shaking. He said, What happened? He said, The car just caught fire. Car caught fire. No, no. We were just coming and there's something. Car just, the whole car. He said, Are you okay? Nothing scratch you. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Not what did you do to make the car catch fire? Your salary. Are you okay? Are you in shape? All right, see you tomorrow. There is a way to live life to punish the devil. There is a way to make the devil to be the one crying. He wanted you to cry. He wanted you. If you have ever lost anything, God was the reason why you didn't lose everything. Or let me say it if you have ever lost anything, God was the reason why it was not your life you lost. It could have been your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Can't jam, can't so. You are the one that is wrong, but be on your way. Don't jam any point next time here. Eh? <laughs> Thank you, sir. No challenge. Be on your way. And you just face your front. There is too much to do with time. That time you are wasting there, use it to calculate progress. Use it to calculate your next level. Use it to calculate your, your destiny. Do you understand what I'm saying? That thing you are trying to cry over is too little to stop you. Stand on your feet in the loud shadow pray. Hey! I am trusting God to raise a set of people with a different kind of mentality. Different kind of mentality. Somebody jilted you. Thank the Lord I didn't kill you with a jilting. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Somebody duped you. Some people, they duped them, they still kill them. You heard the story of the man who scared him. In those days, I think they got about express, I believe. Very, very terrible to them, but not now. All right? Car was stolen, and on the road, he started dancing. Started dancing up. This man, they stole his car, he has ran mad on top. <laughs> they, said, they said, what happened? Why are you dancing? He said, I'm dancing because it was my car they took, not my life. Some people, they took their car, they also took their life. Why are you dancing? Number two, I am dancing because I have something that thief can steal. There are some people except you steal them, them themselves. Why are you dancing? Number three, I am dancing because I am not the one who stole. I can't be called a thief. I am at a higher level than the thief. And when you do like that, God changes your life, changes your story, changes your situation. This morning, I want you to celebrate. I don't know what is not working, but they that be for us are more than they that be for them. What is working for you is more than what is working against you. We are going to celebrate aggressively for the next 10 minutes. Double grace, five and five, 10 minutes. Celebrate aggressively. Give God the thanks, give him the honor, give him the adoration. 
But before we go into the thanksgiving, if there is, if you are going to lift up your voice, if it is a gift of life or any gift you want to thank God for, you are going to do so. While this celebration is on, we will have officers at the back of the screen there that will take testimonies and thanksgivings that you want to give to God that you have not yet done. Was somebody blessed today at all? Were you blessed this morning at all? Were you blessed at all? All right. In everything, give thanks. There's one more situation to give thanks. That, that will be the fourth. Are you ready for that? Give thanks in situations of drastic intervention. That is when God has done something drastic. So there is a thanksgiving you give continually. There is thanksgiving you give morning and evening. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Then there is a thanksgiving you give in, in all things. That is, it doesn't matter what happened. Inside every situation you find something to thank God for. That is in the midst of every situation there is something inside it to thank god for and then in the um, following drastic intervention first chronicles chapter 15 verse 26 the levites carried the ark of the covenant of the lord obed um what's the name of this guy uza carried the ark touched the ark and uza died obed didom carried the ark to his house everybody became afraid to touch the ark then the Levites, it was their duty to go and bring the ark. When they successfully brought the ark home and nobody died, and it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, they offered seven bullets. That was Thanksgiving and seven rams. Lord, we are grateful. What killed person this time around has not killed me? So whenever you have a drastic intervention, pause. Give thanks and you can give thanks also with your resources. Lord, I just want to use this amount to thank you. I think that was 17 years ago. My wife had a confrontation. It was a, a life co confrontation. Life and death confrontation, I would say. And at the end of the day, after appreciating God and all of that, I laid down an offering in six zeros of that time. And I said, Lord, this is to appreciate you. I, I don't want to say thank you in mouth. I want to th say thank you in resources. But I didn't want to take it for granted or think that I deserve for God to help me. No, no, no. It is not. So you do that kind of thing at times of drastic intervention you pause your schedule you give thanks in all the ways you can you give thanks in resources somebody say a loud amen but right, right now we're going to celebrate just say thank god again like i said for the next 10 minutes but before the 10 minutes take two minutes will you do that take two minutes and just appreciate god lord, lord i am here to thank you for the gift of life for the gift of health i am here for promotion in the workplace thank you for a good wife a good husband thank you for children quality children whatever it is go on ahead thank you for all the things how you delivered me from the last accident thank you just go on ahead and appreciate him worship him honor him